بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Today I want to talk about a very important topic, one of the things that has changed because of the modern world. Uh, actually, two things that I want to point out of why there's more magic, more jinns, more paranormal activity, why people are more possessed, why more people are affected because of two things that have been done in the modern times. Number one is the attached bathrooms. As you know, in the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, and I myself am a witness that when we were younger, you know, uh, when we, because now I'm in my 50s basically, when we were younger, uh, when we were in our villages, like my village in Pakistan, uh, the bathrooms would be separate from where we would be living, from the living quarters. So if you wanted to take a bath, you wanted to use the bathroom, even if it was at midnight, it did not matter. They dug a hole in the ground and you had to squat and you had to do your thing right there. And that was, uh, you know, uh, 20 feet, 30 feet, 50 feet away from the living places. If you read the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, also you find the same thing that when they had to use the bathroom they went away from their living places and went into secluded areas and they would use the bathroom over there so the first reason that the paranormal activity or the satanic activities have increased without us realizing that how they're affecting us and they're affecting most human beings uh, one of the reasons is that the bathrooms have been now joined into the house as part of the house. And what is worse is that sometimes our showers and our places of tahara are connected to these places of najasa. Now, there's a lot to be said on that alone, but the second thing that has increased the level of paranormal activity is meat the the abundance of meat everywhere and the abundance of bones everywhere and the b abundance of of uh, of meat particularly for non-muslim jinns and the bones for muslim jinns and the meat for the muslim jinns has reduced so the presence of the Khabithina wal khabithat, the evil and the dirty jinns has increased. And what do they do? You, they do you was wisu fi sudurin nas. They put thoughts into the minds of human beings. This can be most perfectly experienced during salah. When you have salah, you have all sorts of uh, thoughts that you shouldn't be having. Because why? You have allowed shaitan now to do waswasa to you uh, in a way that it is affecting your focus but leave that aside okay so these two things attached bathrooms number two bones okay bones and when the prophet mentioned bones he did not necessarily only mean bones but he also meant what's around the bones the meat okay so let's look at some narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu and try to understand the context of today with what the Prophet Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu said. And Ibn Mas'ud qala qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu an, the great scholar of Islam amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu said Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu said La tastanju Do not do istinja with what? Birawthi With dung now, dung is another one of those things that nowadays, uh, I think the millennials and the young kids and the young generation probably doesn't remember ever seeing this. But again, back in my village, they used to collect the dung and use it as fuel for burning the food, uh, for making the food. Uh, it was very uh, useful. 
And uh, people use dung for all sorts of reasons. But the Prophet said, do not use dung to do istinja. Of course, you're not going to do istinja with something that itself is impure. So we'll come to that part a little bit later. But let me just actually show you. This is an example of the dung, the, you know, the poop of the cows and the horses and all that uh, being used and collected. And this has methane gas in it and can be used for uh, as fuel. Basically, this is natural fuel from the earth. It can be used as fertilizers, has many uh, benefits. OK, so the prophet said, do not use this for cleaning yourself. I think this doesn't need any explanation. It's self-explanatory. And then the Prophet Nabi Muhammad وسلم, says, Wala bil and nor should you use bones. Because these are provisions, these are food, and these are provisions, meaning not just food, but for other purposes also. These are provisions of your brothers of the jinns. Now, the brothers of the jinns means what? Who are your brothers amongst the jinns? They are the Muslim jinns. Okay, the animals of the jinns, they can eat the dung and the Muslims, they will eat the bones of the animals that have been what? Now, this is very, very important to understand. The Muslim jinns will not eat najas. The Muslim jinns will not eat something that's haram. So they will eat only the bones of halal animals that have been slaughtered properly according to the Sharia. That is their food. The food of the animal that has been slaughtered in the name of Allah, that's where you get the bones. And the Muslim jinns will use the provision of the good bones to nourish themselves. Nowadays, when we don't say Bismillah and we and then the jinn, the bad jinns, the evil jinns, the shayateen, they get food from our food because we didn't say Bismillah. And when they eat from the bones that don't say Bismillah, that don't have Bismillah on it because it was not sacrificed in the name of Allah, then that animal, that animal that was sacrificed or killed in the wrong way, not Zabiha, okay, even if it is a halal animal, but it's not killed with Zabiha, it's not killed with Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, then the bones of that animal will be used by the non-Muslims amongst the jinns, or should be. And the bones of the Muslims who sacrificed the animal, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, taking the, now those bones are now halal for the Muslim jinns or the bigger population of the Muslim jinns. Okay. Now, so this, now the haram bones have increased and the halal bones have decreased. And the Prophet said, leave the bones. Now, what, is, what does that mean? What does it mean the Prophet said, leave the bones? That's the other thing that I want to make clear. Is that, see, in the olden days, when they finished food, they threw out the food. Just like they threw out, they threw out the food somewhere far away from the places where human beings were living. Nowadays, we got bones. What do we do? We put them with filth, with our garbage. And who eats from the garbage? The bad shayateen eat from the garbage. The good Muslims are not going to go near the garbage. And so they're starving. The Muslim jinns are starving. And the bad jinns, the khabis jinns, they're getting food. Why? Because you're putting bones into the garbage that has filth in it. And Muslim jinns are not going to go towards that. Okay? So the Muslim jinns are getting weaker. Because they don't have the nourishment as much. And then they have to rely on other things that are not as nourishable to feed them. And the bad jinns are getting the nourishment because you're not saying Bismillah. And number two, you're taking the food that you're eating and putting it in the garbage, which is where shaitan likes to be, in the places of najis. So, what should a Muslim do? What a Muslim should do for his brothers, as the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is this? These are provisions for your brothers amongst the jinns. Those brothers amongst the jinns who want to help you in the, in the deen, in the work of the deen, in that world of the world of the jinns, which includes the shayateen. 
you want to strengthen them. Well, how are you going to strengthen them when you're taking bones that they could be eating and you're throwing that in the garbage? Not very helpful. What must you do? You must not throw halal zabiha animal bones and put them with the filth that you have in your garbage. You should put them somewhere outside the house, maybe in your lawn, maybe in your uh, backyard, maybe somewhere else where the good Muslims can know or will know that the good bones, the halal bones, the zabiha halal bones are in such and such place. If you do that, not that the jinns will become your friends amongst the Muslims, but the shayateen will see, oh, well, this is a place where good Muslims go. So we better, meaning amongst the jinns, amongst your brothers. And they will then be careful of approaching that place because they'll see good Muslim jinns are there also. And, of course, uh, if you are doing ihsan to any creature of Allah, they would like to return that without you even saying a word. You put the good bones there, the halal bones there, the zabiha bones there, and they will uh, benefit for that. That is a reward for you, and that will make the the first line of defense in the world of shaitan, the world of jinns, stronger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let's continue inshallah. In this narration, again, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh, he further clarifies, Qadima wafadu, wafadu al-jinn, a wafad, a, uh, you can say, a group of jinns, uh, emissaries amongst jinns, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqalu ya Muhammad, they say, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innaha ummatuka yastanju bil'azami wa rawthitin wa humamatin. Indeed, your ummah does istanja with bones and dung and with charcoal. فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ جَعَالَ لَنَا فِيهَا رِزْقًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put our provisions in this. قَالَ فَنَهَا نَبِي مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْ ذَلِكَ So after the jinns, the Muslim jinns complained to the Prophet, the Prophet told the Muslim jinns, don't use dung or bones or charcoal for cleaning yourself. The Prophet used to ask for stones from his companions when he was in the bathroom. So, what must you do? This is a very important issue for the jinns. Why? Because they came to the Prophet وسلم, specifically requesting that the Ummah of Muhammad leave the bones for them to eat from. And so, you must try to figure out a way, if you can, if you want to, to not throw the halal zabiha bones into the garbage and then make them dirty and make it najas. No, you should try not to do that. What you should try to do is to try to leave it in a place for a few days or so, where the jinn, Muslim jinns can eat those halal zabiha bones and take the provisions from there that they want and feel good that somebody in the ummah of Muhammad وسلم, is doing what they need because it's not just about the hadith of the Prophet, it's about understanding what were the needs that were tr the Prophet was trying to meet and they were wanted the bones why did they want the what meaning they wanted the bones that were being thrown away or being put away by the muslims and the muslims not to use that for istinja because that makes it najas when you throw away something in the garbage can that makes it najas in some ways it makes it difficult for them but instead if you keep it and if you there's a little bit of meat on it that's even better you leave those bones somewhere outside for them to eat from and then they know that this is a house of a Muslim that eats zabiha meat, that eats halal animals, and zabiha, hand-slaughtered food. And then they will enjoy that. And then they will be able to benefit from that. Maybe uh, some places, some masjids can take care of this for the Muslims. 
for the Muslim jinns to come and pray and also have food. And it doesn't cost anything more other than making logis something logistically possible. In the olden days, uh, either through your shawl or in some other way, they used to put up a, a, a you could say like a curtain around you. When, so you left the places of the living places, you would walk off and you would put like your shawl around you or some curtain around you or somebody would hold it. There's different ways of doing it. And so in this hadith we're about to read, uh, Abu Hayyar radiallahu anh is carrying the wudu pot for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he is also carrying some, sto uh, some, some stones in to, for the Prophet to clean himself. So now, uh, when you have this curtain around, you can't see what's outside that curtain. So the Prophet says, who is there? He says, Abu Hurairah. The Prophet says, give me some stones. And don't bring me any bones and don't bring me any dung. And then the, then Abu Hurairah, after the Prophet was done, asked the Prophet, وسلم, what's with the, uh, the issue about the dung and the bones? And the Prophet said, a group of jinns from a particular place, uh, from Nasi, Nasibun, they came, uh, uh, or Nasibin, they came to me and they told me uh, about uh, that this is their provisions and the Prophet did dua for them and the Prophet praised those particular jinns. So this narration also would be helpful in this account that Anahu uh, kana, uh, meaning Abu Hurairah, kana yahmilu ma'a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam iwa'atan li wudu wa hajatahi so the he carried a pot of water for his wudu or any needs he had so he was following the prophet and you know uh and then the prophet was uh, had a curtain around him and the prophet says man hadha? who is this i'm abu hurairah okay he said uh, to the prophet uh bring me stones uh, بها, so that I might clean myself. Uh, don't bring me bones and don't bring me dung. وضع, ستر, so he left the, 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 the stones by the, you can say, the side or the corner of the curtain that was around the Prophet. And he left so that the Prophet would have privacy. So until the Prophet was done, and then he was walking with the Prophet وسلم, and he said, He said, What's the issue with the bones and the warath, the dung? The Prophet said, وسلم, These two are from the food of the jinn. The other riwayahs that say the dung is specifically for the animals amongst, amongst the jinns. And the bones are for the jinns itself, the Muslim jinns. وَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِينِي وَفَدُ مِنَ وَفَدُ الْجِنْ Indeed came to me a group of jinns. Uh, نَسِيبِين From نَسِيبِين نِعْمَ الْجِنْ They were very blessed jinns. فَسَعَلُونِي زَاد They asked me about provisions. فَدَعُوتُ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ أَنْ لَا يُمِرُّ مِنْ أَعْظَمٍ وَلَا وَلَا رَوْثٍ إِلَّا وَجَدْ and so the Prophet did dua for them that they would pass by no dung and no bones except they would find food on it. So now, this is uh, what the Prophet is explaining to Abu Hurairah, what he's explaining to the companions. He's stopping the companions from using the bones, meaning the bones should be left in a clean place like they were at the time of the Prophet wasallam, and, and the Prophet is indicating Ikhwanukum, your brothers amongst the jinns, the good Muslim jinns. And of course, this would create a stronger bond between good Muslim jinns and Muslims. Now, if you're coming to the masjid, but you're always throwing your bones in a dirty place like the, uh, the, the garbage can, and the jinns that are at the masjid, they're going to look at you and say, this man, he, he always throws his bones in the garbage can. And he always throws his food into the najis. And he throws his bones into the najis. And it leaves no food for me. Like how unthoughtful. So it's important to be thoughtful. Uh, meaning it is important to consider that 
there are other beings besides human beings that need provisions and food and we have a very simple way of doing that for them and the benefits of it inshallah will be more than our logistical problems in this narration uh it makes it clear the difference between the the muslim jinns and non-muslim jinns and saying bismillah on the bones because what happened is and i'll tell you quickly over here and then i'll read part of it is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day was missing the companions of the prophet didn't know where he was they were very scared they thought he'd been killed or snatched or something happened to him they didn't see him all night and then they saw him coming from the direction of hera and they saw the prophet and they told the prophet we were worried about you and the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam a jinn from mesopotamia had called upon and i went to read quran on them and i read quran upon them and then the prophet had a discussion with them and they said in that discussion and this is the part i want to share with you uh, all of the bones in which the name of allah has not been read those are their food because they were non-muslims the prophet was being that way to them or uh, or whatever comes to them amongst the meat that might be on the bone and the food that is the 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 dung is basically food for their beasts and the prophet said to the muslims okay فَلَا تَسْتَنْجُوا بِهِمَا Do not to istanja with dung and with bone. فَإِنَّهُمَا زَادُوا إِخْوَانُكُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ Because amongst those jinns that the Prophet had done da'wah to then become Muslim, and the jinns that were beginning to become Muslim, they were, are your brothers amongst the jinns. Okay? And uh, Abu Isa, uh, Imam Tirmazi says, has a hasanun, hadithun hasanun sahihun. Okay? And in this hadith, the opposite is mentioned because the Prophet now is referring to the Muslim jinns. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, over there, uh, he says, Lakum, for you, meaning the Muslim jinns, Kullu ta'amin azamin Okay? That for you is all the bones, all the bones in which the name of Allah is taken. So in one narration, the non-Muslim jinns, you can either take one of these narrations or you can take both of these narrations together and come to the same conclusion. So, either non-Muslim jinns, the narration that says, لَمْ يَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ In which the name of Allah is not taken, that's provision for you. And then the next narration, the one we're reading right now, it says, and in which the name of Allah is taken is provision for you, meaning for the Muslims. And, uh, or the Prophet said both, or he said one of these. But the point is, and the end result is the same. If the Prophet said to the Muslim jinns, you can eat the bones in which the name of Allah is taken, then that means that the Prophet was telling us Muslims that leave the bones that have the names of Allah on them for your Muslim jinns to eat that are your brothers. Because the Prophet then continues to say, وسلم, فَلَا تَسْتَنْجُوا بِهِمَا فَإِنَّهُمَا تَعَامٌ لِإِخْوَانِكُمْ Indeed, they are food for your brothers. I know many families that suffer from one issue or another issue, but when they start uh, leaving halal zibiha bones for the Muslim jinns. And the Prophet said, in every Muslim house, there's Muslim jinns. So when you start leaving the halal zibiha bones for the Muslim jinns outside your house or in some clean place, Many people that even after doing a lot of things to remove the jinns, they couldn't remove the jinns until they did this. Until they gave provision as sadaqah to the jinns uh, that were good jinns. And then those good jinns, by their being there, by their presence, by their surveillance, uh, by, uh, by whatever Allah allowed them or uh, allowed them to do then it made those evil jinns move away from that place so uh, there are many benefits in doing this uh, at the individual level at the household level at the masjid level 
So I just wanted to bring this uh, to your attention that this is one of the ways that you can bef befriend jinns without befriending, befriending them, especially in the times that we live in where because of the, pre the, the so many bones that the non-Muslims get to eat, so much meat that gets into their hands because it's all non-Zabiha. And then you have, uh, you know, the ba attached bathroom issue so one of the small steps that can be taken to make the situation a little bit better for Muslims, especially Muslims that are affected by these things, is that to leave the, at least the halal zabiya hand-slaughtered bones for the Muslim jinns to eat from so that they can also eat from that halal and tayyib food that will make them strong and then make them be able to do in the cause of Allah the things that they need to do. Okay, as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.